They got to play my part. Y'all didn't play the right part. Can we go to the part, to the right part? How you gonna win when you ain't right within? How you gonna win when you ain't right within? How you gonna win when you ain't right within? Uh-uh, come again. That's what I'm talking about today. Yes! Yes! Uh-uh, come again. How you gonna win if you ain't right within? That's what soulful self-care is all about. Getting right within. So, epic women, I need y'all to help me today. This is an hour presentation that I had to try to get down to 10 minutes. Can y'all help me to do that today? Yes. <laughs> 10 minutes. So we're going to skip through some slides, but I wanted to give you all as much as I could. So feel free to take pictures. Come talk to me after. It's OK. I'm here to answer questions, but I got 10 minutes. All right? Next slide. This is all about me. That's the receipts, but I'm going to tell y'all the real story. Is that OK? Y'all yes. want the real story? Y'all want me to move over here? Oh, we got the clicker. Yes, yes, thank you. We got the clicker. OK. Um, how many mental health professionals, social workers, therapists, clinicians? Almost a lot of y'all. OK. So I come from a social work background. So I come from a background of service. Y'all know about that life. Um, I am a healer at heart. You know, I'm a life coach and intuitive consultant. That's my title. But my heart is of a healer. And so as that, I wanted to save the world. I wanted to save all the humans. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And so I went to Howard University and got my bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in social work. And I said, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to come out here, and I'm going to heal all the humans. And I got into the social work field. I was, a, I was a program director at an outpatient clinic in Greenbelt, Maryland. And I showed up excited. And I left defeated. <laughs> I went into the system and I realized that it wasn't set up to help people heal, but it was really set up to help people to maintain their dysfunction. And I'm a healer. So guess who could not exist in that system? And the problem was I knew I couldn't exist in that system. I was getting stressed. I was getting depressed. I was gaining weight. My short temper, but here I am counseling all these people and I didn't know who to go to for help. I didn't have anybody helping me. And I was burnt out, but I didn't know that I was burnt out because nobody was talking about it. So I thought something was wrong with me. And so I existed like that for a while until I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. How many know, people know what that feels like? I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired and I couldn't take it anymore. And so I finally confided in a colleague. She said, Ava Laura, I got this uh, retreat. Come out to this retreat for women. I was just like, at that point, if she had said, let's go hang glide, and I was on. You know, a lot of people have talked to, I think uh, Tommy was talking about changing your environment and all this. I was ready for a change. So I didn't care what it was. I was going to do it. And so I went on this retreat, and I got back to soulful self-care. And soulful self-care is so much deeper than regular basic self-care, because we epic women. We don't do basic self-care, right? Soulful self-care is really tapping into the need deep depths of who you truly are, who you were created to be before you forgot, okay? So self-care is about nurturing all the multidimensional aspects of who you are because we're multidimensional beings. And so when I got to that retreat, I got back to doing the yoga and the meditation and just taking time for myself, listening to myself. Right? And I found myself on my hands and knees calling out, crying out to God, like, you got to get me out of here. I can't do this. I cannot do this. I can't live like this anymore. Crying, boo-hooing, ugly cry, lay it all at the altar, whatever we want to call it, right? Let it all go. And then I felt so good. And then I was like, oh, shoot, I got to go back to work on Monday. <laughs> I got to go back into the rat race. And I did, because that's what I was supposed to do, right? I'm an overachiever. Overachiever, overcoming perfectionist, I got to do what I got to do. And so I went back to work. And regular day, I went there doing what I'm thinking I'm supposed to do. And my boss calls me into his office and he says, Ava Laura, it's been great having you, but I got to let you go. Wow. And I said, wait, what? Exactly, wow, wait, what? 
Ego was having a fit, like, who, me? Ava Lauren, you're firing me? I had never been fired from anything in my life, okay? I graduated one A short from summa cum laude. I'm still hanging on to that A. <laughs> so I was shocked. So ego was in a tailspin, but my spirit was like, well, Ava Lauren, this is what you asked for. This is what you prayed for, so what are you gonna do? And that became my path, what am I gonna do? And so I took what I call my six month healing sabbatical. I took six months, y'all, and y'all gonna see that number is significant when we talk about the CEO exchange. Six month healing sabbatical, did my work, opened up Ava Lauren's Healing Center in November of 2005, and I'm still here, y'all, 2002. <laughs> 2022. Let me, let me not, okay, now how does the clicker work? <laughs> Next slide, there we go. Why do we struggle with self-care? This is a question that I want y'all to ask yourself. We don't have time to go back and forth, but I need you all to answer this for yourself. Some stats for you, entrepreneurships and mental health. The thing that I want you to get out of there is according to this study, 50% of entrepreneurs are more likely to report having a mental health condition. Y'all can take pictures of these slides because I told y'all I got 10 minutes, all right? Self-care mindset shift. If your mind ain't right, your business ain't tight. If your mind ain't right, your business ain't tight. Y'all worried about funnels and systems and websites and, and all this stuff, but if your mind ain't right, your business ain't tight. I didn't, who, who, who did that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we talked a lot about mindset. Brooke talked a lot about mindset yesterday. Tanya talked about it today. Psychologists have proven that we have over 60,000 thoughts a day. That's about average. 60,000 thoughts by 30, 98% of our thoughts are repeated. They're like a broken record, broken eight track, broken CD player, going over and over and over again. So you've been telling yourself the same old stories, the same old lies. 80% of those thoughts are negative, 80%. So do you understand why self-care is so important? Because this is what we got to release and let go of on a daily basis. We can't slip up and be like, oh, I did self-care yesterday. I did it last week. This is what we're contending with every single day. I just want y'all to see some more stats, see higher levels of depression, ADHD, substance abuse, and bipolar with entrepreneurs. Is this a wake up call, y'all? Again, entrepreneurs, 49% versus 32% of non-entrepreneurs in terms of mental health conditions. So I'm breezing through this. I just want y'all to see what we're working with and why self-care is so important. Next slide. Y'all help me. Okay, self-care. Why self-care? What I want you all to see about this is that self-care is deliberate. It's deliberate. So you want to be intentional in your self-care. It's not happenstance. It doesn't just happen. You got to plan for it. Just like you're planning your launches, you're planning your trips, you're planning all the things that you're doing in life, you got to plan your self-care. It is deliberate. It is intentional. Five lessons I learned. Obviously, I don't have time to go through all these lessons. But the one thing that I want you all to get out of this, again, take the picture. The one thing that I want you all to get out of this is that your self-care must match the level of your stress. Your self-care must match the level of your stress. If it does not match the level of your stress, it becomes superficial self-care. And we want what kind of self-care? Soulful self-care. We don't want superficial self-care. If you're going through a divorce or a breakup, how many of y'all been through a divorce or a breakup? Are you going to get a mani-pedi or are you gonna to go to therapy and some life coaching? Which one is superficial self-care? The mani-pedi. That's not gonna work for that, you need more. You gotta up it, you gotta boost it. I mean, unless you know you end up attracting a man because you got that nice mani-pedi and it helps you, but you know, we got some men with some foot fetishes out there, so that might work, but not for you. That's external, right? Self-care must match the level of your stress. Reiki is my favorite type of self-care. There are all types of self-care. Reiki was the first thing that I started when I was in my six-month healing sabbatical. I learned Reiki, became a Reiki master teacher. It was my gateway drug into myself. 
right? It's where I learned all about me. It was deeper than meditation. It was deeper than all the things that I had been doing because it allowed me to see who I was truly for the first time. I love Reiki. I'm a Reiki stan. My clients love Reiki, and I wanted to share Reiki with you. How many of you all know what Reiki is? Okay, okay. Epic women, okay. So these are 10 reasons that people love Reiki. There are obviously more, right? But for those of you all who want to get deeper with Reiki, for those of you all who are like, I don't even know what Reiki is, I don't care, um, I want to help to introduce you. So if you're interested, I am a Reiki master teacher. I do hold both virtual trainings, and they are awesome. Some of my Reiki students will be here. Actually, one was in the audience. And there, yes, I got one back here, and the one is coming this week. So y'all can learn all about it, but I love Reiki. It is everything. It is worth all the hype. And it's wonderful to receive it, but it's wonderful to learn it because for me, that's self-empowerment. You can do self-Reiki, so you can do it for yourself anytime. You can do it for your loved ones. You can also, if you're a mental health professional, you healer, anybody really, you can also use it as an additional income to do it for your clients. So it really is a holistic practice and it helps you in things that I can't even explain to you because it allows you to get to know you. And we're talking about soulful self-care, right? And that's all about your core, the depths of who you are. So I wanted to share that with you. Free gift for y'all. I don't know if this QR code, we was trying to be fancy. I don't know if that's going to work. But you can try to see if the QR code is going to work for you. You can download that. If it doesn't, you can follow me on social media. And it's not link in my bio. Did it work? Yes. Listen. Technology, y'all, you know, don't always be working for us. That's why we got to practice self-care, because regardless, we're going to do what it do. Well, thank you all so much, ladies. I hope that you really have a new lens on self-care, right? It's a hot topic. Everybody's talking about it. But I hope you all learned something different or deepened your understanding that you'll be able to implement in your life. Did you get something good today? Yes. How you going to win when you ain't right within? How you going to win when you ain't right within? How you going to win when you ain't right within? Uh-uh. Come again. Bye, Epic Women. <laughs>